Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this Admiralty Jurisdiction and Settlement of Maritime Claims Bill 2016, sir. Sir, this is the law governs maritime disputes and also the offences. It is the body which deals with both domestic law governing maritime activities and also international law governing the relationships between the utilities and those who operate the vessels. It also deals with many issues like uh, marine commerce, marine navigation, salvaging, shipping, sailors, and the transportation of passengers and goods, etc. Admiralty jurisdiction till now is being restricted to three high courts, and now it is being extended to all the high courts of the maritime states. I need not mention that this act is going to repeal about uh, five obsolete statute dating back to 1840, 1861, 1890, 1891, 1865, and these acts are being repealed, and now a consolidated law is being enacted for efficient governance. There is an urgent need to update the existing laws so as to be responsive to the needs of the industry, and also to ensure that the maritime disputes are disposed of expeditiously and effectively. Even though the DG Shipping has initiated action way back in 1986, and also the Supreme Court has uh, emphasized the need for urgency of updating the laws, so far we could not make any progress. India is one of the leading maritime nations, sir. We know that uh, sea coast is the natural resource for the development nowadays. Many states and the nation is interested in developing the sea ports on the coast. Uh, we have uh, territorial waters to the extent of 12 nautical miles, and also we have continental shelf, contiguous zone, and up to 2,000 nautical miles we have the exclusive economic zones where India has the right to exploit the natural resources in the seas. Beyond 2,000 nautical miles, the, it is the high sea, which is of uh, having no ownership, but owned by the entire world. Sir, at present, we have uh, Coast Guard Act, and also Maritime Zones of India, Regulation of Foreign Fishing Vessels Act 1981, which provides some provisions with the, to deal with the offenses committed in territorial waters and the contiguous zone and EZ. Previously, we have uh, a policy of charter vessels for fishing. We brought foreign vessels where the foreign crew are there on the vessels, and there were some disputes, and that type of operation needs to be resolved by certain provisions of the Act, sir. Now, this Act also excludes the inland vessels and the warships, naval, auxiliary, and vessels used for non-commercial purposes. This Act also provides a provision to extend further in future on these vessels also. The Government of India is very much interested in encouraging the development of seaports, sir. I come from uh, Visakhapatnam, where there is a major seaport. When uh, another port is being planned nearby Visakhapatnam at a distance of 20 kilometers, I thought whether it can affect the performance of the Vizag port. But uh, to my surprise, both the ports are doing very well, and there is no problem if any port is being established nearby. Sir, the Andhra Pradesh has 974 kilometers long coastline next to the state of Gujarat. We have uh, one major port, three ports in private sector now in operation. Our government, state government, led by Honorable Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu, is very much interested to develop more number of ports on the coast, sir. As mentioned by my earlier speaker, Andhra Pradesh Reorganization Act provides the construction of a major port in Andhra Pradesh at Dugaraja Patnam and the ports at Ramaya Patnam and other Bhavanam Padu, Kalinga Patnam, many other places. I request the support of the government of India to give assistance for the establishment of these ports, sir. Sir, I would like to mention here, in the GST Council, there was a discussion 
about the jurisdiction of levying taxes on the transactions made in the territorial waters. I think the, this issue is also being resolved amicably by the GST Council and GST is going to be implemented soon. And if any dispute that arises, that can be resolved in this procedure, sir. I, with these few words, I conclude and I support the bill, sir. Thank you very much.